Hello folks, Miami Beach Artists here. I thought this video was lost forever. This thing's about 15 months old. While the uh, George Floyd riots were going on, I was racked by a Miami Beach police officer while I was sleeping. At the time, I had my old phone that I filmed my early videos with, which had an 8 gigabyte memory and not enough room to process big videos. And it only had a two megapixel camera. So I shot this in 360p in order to have enough room on the phone to process it through the video editor. I was working on editing it and never got it uploaded. A month later, when I got my first stimulus payment, I went out and I bought myself a, a Samsung Galaxy 10. And I moved the SD card from the old phone to the Galaxy 10. And I was still working on editing this on the Galaxy 10 when on the night of July 3rd I saw fireworks going off from behind the post office. And I went over and started shooting video of two Miami Beach police officers with a mortar in a restricted loading zone area of the post office at 2 a.m. shooting off these commercial grade fireworks when two Uniformed Miami Beach police officers came up behind me and I didn't see them approaching and snatched the phone out of my hands with the SD card in it. I thought this was lost forever until a couple of weeks ago I got an email from Samsung saying they were making changes to the Galaxy Cloud and I clicked on the link and lo and behold in my Galaxy Cloud account was this video and I didn't even know it had been backed up to Samsung. So I brought it back down and I put it on my new phone and edited the rest of it for what it's worth and now you get to see it 15 months later and please forgive the square picture because it was shot in 360p with a 2 megapixel camera but at least you finally get to see it well here's the video enjoy previous video, I mentioned Brown and Haunted. Those two guys in 2009, on June 20th, stopped me as I got to the beach at 7.30 in the morning. They demanded my ID and put me in handcuffs immediately. I asked them why. Well, there have been a lot of thefts on the beach lately and you're out here in street clothes. Yeah, well, you just watch me lug my guitar and my umbrella and all my equipment out here from the street. My trunks are under my clothes. I just haven't had time to take them off yet. I just got here. You were sitting 20 feet away from me as I passed by you walking across the sand. Exactly what crime do you think I've committed? Shut up and sit on the sand. I pulled everything from my pockets, put it up on top of the ATV, started going through my wallet, ran my license, and asked me my social security number. I'm like, well, you've already got my wallet. The car's in there. And says, okay, smart ass, huh? He grabs the chain between the handcuffs while I was seated on the sand and picked it up over his head, dislocating both my shoulders and causing three inch gashes on each wrist. After my license came back clean, they got on the ATVs and they threw all my possessions, everything that was in my pockets, onto the sand, except they took off with my wallet, my keys, my apartment, and my car, and my cell phone. And as they were riding away, Hutton laughed and said, haha, one day we'll have a beer over this. When I got home that night, after breaking into my own apartment, I watched the 6 o'clock news and saw that Professor Henry Gates had sat down and had a beer with the police chief who had arrested him for breaking into his own house. Obama had advised him not to sue. He was apparently a friend of Obama's, a professor at Harvard, living in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he had returned from a trip, come back from the airport and discovered they lost his keys. And a neighbor saw him breaking into his own house and called the police. 
and a police officer who he had supposedly known for 20 years arrested him for breaking into his own house despite the fact that he had ID proving he lived there. And Obama urged him not to sue to sit down and have a beer with the guy and discuss the nature of race relations. Well, the day they had the beer, these two black cops decided to take it out on me and retaliate. Now, we had a situation on the 18th of this month, which was posted in my last video, and there's a link to it in the description, about my being illegally searched and trespassed from a public sidewalk because of a non-existent complaint from a business owner adjacent when the business was closed. I posted the video on the 23rd of May, Sunday. Monday Memorial Day, the police murdered that guy in Minneapolis. On Tuesday, people were protesting. And by Wednesday, they were rioting. On Tuesday, I was sleeping on an easement next to the Feinberg School. I was awakened by being whacked across the face. I heard a voice say, can you breathe? I said, huh? He said, oh, then you're all right. And when I sat up, I saw a black officer getting into a Mark Miami Beach police car, a male, in uniform. I saw him from the back. I could not see your face. And I couldn't get the number of the car as he pulled off, screeching his wheels. I have a broken nose. Now, this was obviously done to a white guy, or it was in retaliation for what the white cops did to the black guy in Minneapolis. In 2011, the FBI took over internal affairs at the Miami Beach Police Department after they had cleared a bunch of cops of wrongdoing, after they fired over 100 shots into and at a motorist driving down Collins Avenue for having committed a traffic infraction. A fellow named Raymond Cerise. One officer, a female, shot across the street at him and missed the car entirely. And a bullet hit a woman half a block down dining at a sidewalk cafe in the arm. After internal affairs found no evidence of wrongdoing on the part of the police officer who had shot the woman. The FBI took over internal affairs and they found over 30 complaints against Houghton that were uninvestigated from people he had arrested or improperly searched without arresting that were missing possessions afterward. So they got a warrant and they searched his condo and they found computers, valuable artwork, jewelry, and a couple of knapsacks belonging to people he had arrested. Only the knapsacks had been reported to Internal Affairs. So they arrested him for the knapsacks. The state's attorney filed charges and then reached a settlement agreement with him, which did not involve any jail time or loss of his police certification. He was then brought up on federal charges. He took a plea bargain, 10 years in prison. And after he served three and a half years, Obama pardoned him on his way out of office. FDLE never revoked the man's police certification. Obama's pardon erased his conviction. And he sued to get his job back and was reinstated to the Miami Beach Police Force with back pay for the time he spent in jail and seniority credits so that he was promoted from sergeant to lieutenant based on the seniority two months after he rejoined. This was in 2017, at the beginning of the year, January and February. January he rejoined, the end of February he was promoted. I'm wondering if that was Houghton who had whacked me. He used a weapon of some kind, possibly a flashlight, possibly a baton. I don't know. What I do know is my nose is broken and I can't identify my assailant. But at least nothing was stolen. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that video. And remember to subscribe to my new channel, Miami Beach Accountability, because I'll be putting most of my new uploads there. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment in the comment section because it helps the algorithm on this one. And I'll see you all on the next one. I'm out of here.